Welcome to the breakdown. From this past week and into this past weekend, four days of severe weather stateside, we are showing you the aftermath and the devastating visuals of a deadly tornado outbreak causing widespread destruction everywhere from Texas to Iowa across the central U.S. Hundreds of tornado warnings and undoubtedly this will lead to dozens of confirmed tornadoes. Kevin McKay joins us now. This was the first major outbreak of the severe weather season stateside and talk about the setup. Why was this the perfect setup for a multi-day severe weather outbreak? Well, it's pretty ideal and this is the time of year we're starting to focus on the Gulf states and then Texas and Oklahoma. So this is the situation we had that trough down over the Rockies, Denver included, and then all that ridging up through Atlanta, Nashville, Columbus, that kind of steered the flow, but also prevented that low from trekking eastward. So there you go, that purple circle, that is where the dry, cool air from the west is meeting that warm Gulf energetic moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. And then on top of that, our wind direction at different heights was starting to shear about 45 degrees, and that is perfect right along that line and that line did not move for a couple of days. Yeah, normally we see the type of instability that this severe weather outbreak brought to get wrung out over one or two days even, but a four day event. Let's talk about the multitude of the numbers when it comes to the warnings from this event. Uh, hundreds upon hundreds of tornado warnings and hundreds of reported tornado sightings, but this doesn't mean that there were hundreds of tornadoes. No, that's a little bit of a nuance there. So take, for instance, if a tornado went down your street, you might report it, your neighbor might report it, someone five houses down might report it. There's three reports, but it's the same tornado. So you have to take all those reports, see which ones are related to the same tornado, and then they go out and survey them, give them a rating, and they're going to be busy for the next couple of days. They've already released some ratings. Well, that alerting system undoubtedly saves lives as well. Let's talk about some of the ratings. There's been a few EF2s, a few EF3s, but some of these tornadoes are massive. Let's talk about the potential of an EF5 tornado. How rare would that be? Well, they usually happen every few years, but we go through droughts. We're in a drought right now, but that tornado, for instance, we were just looking at, it looks huge but that's because it has so much dirt to feed off of. So it can really fit, fill its wind diameter. So uh, here's a look at all those reports. Now you also notice how sporadic the towns are in the central US. So unlike a hurricane, a hurricane, they send out planes when they're out in the middle of the ocean and they measure the wind and that's what gives us maybe a category five out in the ocean, but it'll be a category two when it makes landfall. With a tornado, you have to wait till it's done and then you go find the damage. So in order for it to be a category or a EF5 tornado, it has to produce damage of that caliber. If it goes through an uh, empty field or just crops or maybe mobile homes, that's not indicative of EF5 damage. Hmm. As you can see there, the cleanup is just beginning the aftermath for many uh, counties that have called states of emergencies after these slow moving and potent storms. What about the time in the season? We're talking about getting into the, the active weather season, but is this early? It's not overly early for the south. Iowa, Nebraska, this is a little ahead of schedule, but essentially March, that is when we're focusing down near the Gulf. And then as we get towards May, we're Oklahoma, Kansas, and then South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, the Canadian prairies, that's when we're in July and August. Okay, we'll keep covering this big severe weather outbreak stateside for you right here on the Weather Network.